Hi, and welcome. Larry Olson here. I'm a specialist in what is called brain hacking. And all that is, is taking a look at the miraculous element of our brain and its role in why we keep getting what we're getting in our lives, whether it's good for us or not. You know, I wanted to also share with you, I want to encourage you to stick around because I'm going to talk about neuroplasticity. What is it and how it can be such a bonus and benefit to us. And most people are unaware of it. They've heard the term before. And also, those of you that hang out, I want to provide you with a gift, a thank you for all of the comments that have been made and the following that we've developed over time. Uh, it's absolutely miraculous and uh, wouldn't happen without you watching this right now. So thank you for that. Um, let's talk a little bit about neuroplasticity. Have you ever been stuck in anything in your life? Have you ever felt like you, you know, it was the same old, same old, another day, but basically the same outcomes were going to occur? Um, maybe you're attempting to accomplish something and you've gotten bogged down, or maybe you're a little burned out. Some people get overwhelmed. They have so many things going on and they're attempting to multitask, which is so challenging for our brain. You know why? Because it can't. It can only focus on one thing at a time, yet we continue to try to do what? So many different things. Now, what is neuroplasticity? Well, years and years ago, we thought that we were fixed, that the brain was a static, robotic organ that had a role to play, not unlike the human heart, and just did it automatically without any of our assistance. And so whatever was going on, however we, whatever we believed, that just, you know, live with it. It's going to stay that way for the rest of your life. So if you don't feel like you're good in something, you're never going to be good at it. If you feel like you've tried and it didn't work out for you, stop trying because it's never going to work out for you. I mean, that was type of the attitude was stop complaining, don't be a victim, and uh, just accept life the way it is. You know, you made the choice. Now man up. That kind of attitude is archaic now because what the brain can do, we found out, is it can form new connections. It can learn. It can continue to grow. It can create new neurons if a hundred billion is not enough. And so we have this miraculous organ that we're finding out now just needs new information. And we get new information by how we talk to ourselves and what we perceive through our senses. And as far as the brain is concerned, even the things we imagine are true. So what are you imagining? What is taking place in your life? How is your life going right now? And if there's any areas of your life that you don't think you're showing up as the best version of yourself, play a little bit with what is called neuroplasticity. In other words, start using your imagination. Bowling ball. What'd you picture in your mind? A harness on a sheep? No, you pictured a bowling ball until I said what? Harness on a sheep. Well, that's kind of an interesting image, isn't it? How about the color red? See that anywhere? Why weren't you looking for another color? Because you brought up red, Larry. So what's happening as I'm sharing this information with you is I'm showing you what your brain does. It begins to take pictures. It begins to take pictures for you that have already been taken from your past and brings them into this moment called now. And that's why 95% of us think about what's ever on our mind and less than 5% know how they think. So what we continue to do is repeat based on what our brain has learned and we bring it into this moment right now. So as you're listening to me, you're listening with your experiences and your understandings and what these words mean to you, not necessarily what the experiences are that I have had and what these words mean to me. So just the act of being able to gain new information can be challenging if we don't know how our brain operates. So this is what I'm going to ask you to do. I'm going to ask you to imagine what's going to transpire in the next three hours. Just think about that for a moment. 
I know that I'll be done with filming videos because today is the video day. I know that um, I'll probably have dinner. Um, I haven't thought yet of what dinner will be, but you see what I'm doing? I am beginning to imagine a time that hasn't occurred yet, haven't I? Now, if I want to have the most amazing dinner I've ever had in my life, I will think differently than I need to put some food together. So it's not only how we think, but what we think about that creates neuroplasticity. Because if I ask you to think about somebody that you care about and to come up with an idea that allow them to recognize how much you love them, and make sure you make them aware of that within the next three hours, you'll behave differently. The same thing happens when we start imagining what we want to take place when we get home. Most of us have been home enough to already know what's going to take place. So neuroplasticity isn't important because we already got it figured out. We know who's going to be there. We know what night it is. We know what we're going to eat. We know what is going to transpire. We know what shows we're going to watch. We know what time we're going to go to bed. We know. Does that make sense? But when we decide, is there greater opportunity than what I'm experiencing in life right now? And by the way, the only answer is yes, of course there is. Do I want to bring the old version of myself to that situation and expect new results? Or do I want to use neuroplasticity and start to imagine what would need to take place for this evening to be one of the most miraculous evenings I've ever spent? Because how do we know this isn't our last evening? How do we know how many more evenings we have? And why should we wait? And why should we say, oh, what night is it? Oh, could you pick another night, Larry? I've already got these things that are gonna take place. Are you pumped about them? Can you hardly wait? Well, that is what really begins the neuroplasticity, your opportunity to create a higher version of self, grow into it, and then look back and go, you know what? I used to be like that. I can't believe I even thought that way before. So now, do you want to manifest wealth? Do you want to manifest abundance? Do you want these things to occur in your life at a greater extent than they are now? Well, I've put together a free ebook for you on overcoming these limiting beliefs, habits, and attitudes that can keep us from attracting wealth and abundance. And we're gonna use and accomplish it by using this thing called our own brain. You got one, I got one, neither one of us developed it. But if you don't know any better, you'll keep acting based on what you've learned up to this moment in time. You'll put an X through neuroplasticity and you won't be pumped about whatever takes place because you expect it anyway, unless you expect it to be amazing. So if you're ever caught in a situation where you feel stuck, begin to ask yourself, how would I like it to be? And then watch how neuroplasticity comes to be your best friend. Thank you for taking the time. I look forward to our next opportunity together.